Peace be with you everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Trevor, really grateful to have you here. And today's video is just gonna be a recap of my weekly rotation from this uh, kind of last week of March here. I think today is the 27th or 28th, so like the 21st up until now, I wanna say. Uh, so without further ado, I'm just gonna get right into uh, this breakdown here, starting off with Monday, broke out Green Irish Tweed. Uh, so it was a really nice kind of a 40 degree sunny weather uh, atmosphere around where I was at. Uh, I just feel like this um, is really nice for that kind of brisk quality air that you get in that cold aspect of spring but it was still nice and bright and sunny and just kind of the way that the sun was hitting the grass was um, you know giving off that really nice green tinge uh, and this just kind of smells like rolling green hills. Uh, there's like a violet note in here that gives it like an ozonic quality that kind of uh, captures like the wet dew that you would be getting off of grass and then a little bit of like a minty lemon verbena to kind of um, you know um, go well with that brisk air that you're getting during that time. Uh, beautiful stuff. Uh, this is a newer formulation so I can't speak about the older bottles but uh, this is still better than any of the clones that I've tried of this one. I'm grateful to have it in my collection and it's worth checking out, uh, getting a sample of and seeing if it uh, works for you. That's Green Irish Tweed from Monday. Uh, so Tuesday we had a little bit of a rainy day. It was um, just drizzling. It wasn't coming down too hard, but it was a little bit more dark and uh, I decided to reach for this one. It was a newer addition to my collection, so I wanted to kind of give it some test wares. This is the Eau de Par Fum version of Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir. I've owned the EDT for some time. Um, this one I feel like is a little bit uh, sweeter, a little bit more rounder. The musk isn't as sharp, but it's still there and a very present dominant aspect of the fragrance. So you just get like a really nice uh, ebony wood, kind of a dark woody aspect underneath like a, a musk focus. Uh, there's still some cardamom in this one, at least to my nose. They don't list it in this uh, version on Fragrantica, but I still get that little uh, kind of sexy sweetness from the cardamom. And uh, an amber note helps to kind of sweeten this one up a little bit more. Um, Really enjoyable wear. Uh, it's not quite like a blue fragrance per se, the way that uh, you get the shower gel kind of citrus woods from uh, something like, uh, you know, Blue de Chanel, but uh, definitely something I'm looking forward to wearing a lot more this spring. This is uh, Narciso Rodriguez Blue Noir EDP. Um, okay, so Wednesday, Wednesday it kind of stopped raining, but it was really foggy out. So it had kind of this really nice, um, just mysterious aspect going on outside. A little bit gray, a little bit green from the grass that's starting to emerge again. Uh, the trees were getting kind of moist and uh, the logs were giving off a little bit of their scent. Uh, so I went for this one right here, Lalique Linsumi. Um, really beautiful kind of Neo Fougere fragrance. You get the classic lavender and shaving foam vibe that you would get from a normal barbershop fougere, but then there's a uh, rum note in here that kind of sweetens it up a little bit, makes it a little bit more modern. Um, really incredible stuff, especially for the price. I picked my tester up for like 25 bucks, and I think the regular bottles go for right around 30, 35. Uh, as you can see from the uh, dent that I've put in this one, it's really uh, one of my favorites for springtime. Um, Probably going to be wearing it uh, quite a bit more. I think this is great all the way from March through April. Um, and a little bit on the colder days in May. Uh, it is, I think, more suited for um, kind of, you know, either colder days or uh, warmer nights. Um, it definitely has a little bit of this kind of, uh, I don't know, vibe to it that makes it apt for, uh, like I said, like a foggy day. It's got kind of like a spooky aspect to it, in my opinion. Uh, kind of, you know, this uh, bottle presentation gives it that little bit of a gothic feel as well, I feel. So that's uh, La Ligue Linsumi for Wednesday. Uh, Thursday. So Thursday was an interesting day for me. Um, I, if you haven't uh, watched my Q&A video, um, I'm a Muslim. So uh, we started fasting for Ramadan on Thursday. So I've been going without food or water or drink of any kind for... Uh, sun up to sundown. So for me, where I'm at right now, it's about 6 a.m. till 7:30 ish p.m. Uh, so a little bit over 12 hours. Uh, so that first day was really hard. I g had a really bad headache from uh, cutting down on the caffeine because uh, I couldn't drink the coffee as much as I normally do. So um, uh, didn't really even couldn't even really appreciate wearing fragrance that day because my headache was like so bad. But um, the one that I did wear that day, it was a little bit rainy, kind of like on Tuesday with the uh, Blue Noir, a little bit of a drizzle, gray overcast, kind of dark. Uh, it was Dunhill Edition. Uh, creamy, 
minty Christmas tree is what you get with this one. Geranium, basil, sandalwood, amber, tonka. Uh, surprisingly came out in 84, but it has a really nice modern appeal. Like it, it's got that uh, sweet tonka kind of base. That's really prevalent and popular today. And then the, the balsam fir just makes the green aspect of this really shout out. It kind of smells quite a bit like the juice color. Uh, again, as you can see, the juice level uh, got a pretty good dent in there. One of my favorites to wear, especially for these rainy days in spring, just because of the, the greenery that's going on in here. I think this is great for uh, transitional fragrance, though. You could wear this easily, like year round, in my opinion. The balsam fir has that Christmas tree vibe, makes it great for winter. Uh, there's some nutmeg in here that also kind of helps to sweeten it up and gives it a little bit of that, um, uh, you know, festive spice for the uh, Thanksgiving kind of season. And then there's uh, some citruses in the top as well that make it wearable in the uh, high heat, in my opinion. So that's a really great, versatile, cheapy Dunhill edition. Uh, okay, so Friday. Friday was a little bit gray, cloudy, overcast, but the clouds were a little bit brighter. There was some sun peeking in through some holes here and there. The clouds kind of had the color of this juice going on a little bit, and this is Prada Amber Pour Homme. Um. Uh, one of Prada's best, in my opinion. It's lost favor as of recently. Uh, there's rumors of discontinuation, but you can still buy it on PradaBeauty.com for uh, like 115 for 100 ml. I think discounters still have it going from anywhere between 60 and 80 dollars for 100 ml. Um, but yeah, incredible stuff. It's just like it got that really classic Prada soapy vibe. And really nice, clean, perfect for the office, but it's it's got this sweet edge to it that makes it uh, really a beautiful wear in colder weather as well. Uh, saffron and myrrh is what you're going to be getting, uh, two of the main notes in here other than the, um, the, the overall soapy composition. Just makes it, uh, like I said, really great for cold weather. I think you could wear this one uh, anytime but the high heat. Uh, despite being called Prada Amber Pour Homme, it's, it's not so much of an amber fragrance in my opinion. I think there is like a resinous quality from the myrrh uh, and it is sweet. Uh, so you, you do get a little bit of the amber, but it's more really just like a very nice luxury soap kind of smell with a little bit of like a um, uh, kind of like a rough edge texture coming off of the saffron. Definitely worth owning. I'm thinking about trying to get a backup bottle. I've got a pretty good dent in here already, and if it is getting discontinued, I'm going to want to have this one uh, in my wardrobe for years to come. So, uh, Friday Prada Amber Pour Homme. And then uh, Saturday. So Saturday, it started warming up a bit. Uh, started off kind of cloudy and rainy, but by the time I was leaving the house that day, it was, uh, you know, quite a bit brighter and starting to get more into the vibe of spring so i went ahead and reached for this one right here creed's silver mountain water uh so this is uh again um, maybe not worth the price these days i've only tried the newer formulations i can't speak on how they used to be when they came in the 120 ml bottles before uh, i think black rock uh, hedge fund kind of bought them out and started diluting the juice but I thoroughly enjoy wearing this one. I do only get about four to five hours uh, longevity, so I think it's, you know, that's not really, um, uh, you know, appropriate for trying to charge the prices that Creed does these days to only have that much longevity. But the wear in that time span is really incredible. Uh, there's like black currant and tea in here, and they kind of, uh, the black currant gives off a little bit of like a melony kind of vibe to me, like a cantaloupe uh, kind of vibe almost. And then there, the tea note in here has like a, an inky vibe, almost like an Earl Grey tea in some sense. And then there's just like some beautiful bright citruses going off the top. I'm just gonna go ahead and remind myself of the opening of this one. Yeah, just kind of some really nice, beautiful, sparkly citrus. And then it's got that inky, almost, uh, yeah, like Earl Grey vibe going on with some melony sweetness. Uh, it's been, it was a little bit of a linear wear, uh, for me at least, um, but just really epitomizes the vibe of spring in my opinion. But, um, this one is incredible, even in its current formulation, at least for me. I really would like to know what the old one smelled like. So that was Saturday Creed Silver Mountain Water. And finally, Sunday. So Sunday, we actually reached up into the 60 degree mark, so it was really getting into full spring, full swing of spring. Uh, the weather also was very spring-like. It was like... Uh, transitioning in between uh, like really bright sun and uh, then there was like a huge storm that kind of swept through but it was like a very 
uh, condensed isolated cloud and it just like dropped a bunch of rain really fast and then was in and out of town within like 15 minutes so there was just like almost like tornado season kind of vibes going on but it didn't last long and we got a lot of like beautiful clouds and sunshine intermittent between that uh, so i went ahead and wore this one right here a reeve gauche from ysl this is the la collection version again haven't smelled the most vintage uh, formulation in the uh, cylindrical bottle the tin can but this is uh, just a, for me, it's a very outdoorsy kind of barbershop fragrance with a really nice kind of um, sweetness. I think there's a star and east note, at least there was in the original formulation. They don't list it in this version on uh, Fragrantica, but I do pick it up. So I do just kind of have that sense of like a, a really sweet shaving cream with uh, a nice outdoorsy greenery going off on the top. Um, I think maybe from like some vetiver in there that gives it that grassy uh, kind of green outdoorsy vibe. And then the lavender in here just gives it that really beautiful kind of shaving cream. Uh, really glad that I own this one in my collection. It is discontinued and hard to find. It's like a little bit of a legendary fragrance. Uh, I might have, you know, it's only not even 100 ml, so I did pay a little bit more than I think the, um, the smell of the juice is worth on this one. But uh, as a collector, I'm really glad to have this iconic fragrance in my collection. So that was uh, Sunday Reeve Gauche Pour Homme. Okay, so that was my week in fragrance. Uh, let me know your weekly rotation down in the comments section below. Let me know if you tried any of these. And uh, I appreciate you sticking with me to the end of this one. I'll see you in the next one. Take care.